So, buenos dias. Uh, yo me llamo Chiara, and this is all the Spanish that I know. So, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I will try to uh, explain myself uh, as clear as I can. And uh, as I said, I sometimes I can understand Spanish, so if you have questions or doubt, feel free to ask me in whatever language you prefer among the one that I know, of course. In any case, otherwise, I will ask you to, to translate. So, uh, I'm here on behalf of DFRC AG, uh, where the Swiss company where I work for in the Singaporean office, and I'm in charge of the operations worldwide. Uh, I am Italian, as already said, and uh, I graduated in um, Politecnico di Milano. Uh, I have a Master of Science in Telecommunication Engineering, and then I got an, an MBA in the School of Business of Politecnico di Milano. I spent most of my life there, and then I moved to Singapore, where I am actually managing the Data as a Service Initiative for DFRC. So, what I would like to discuss with you today uh, refers to especially how we can look in a new and innovative way to uh, everyday life that is lived in the cities, and how these insights can be used in order to improve the services for the communities. Our technology, the location-based technology called LBA Sense, is in fact used in order to uh, give you in insights and uh, new ideas about how people move in the city, how they live, where they go and what they do, and how this can be used for uh, improve their lives uh, or uh, to change transportation services, for example, is what we are discussing here. This is what we call usually smart cities, and this is how our technology enables uh, smart city concepts. But uh, with a specific focus on the data as a service initiative in Singapore, I would like to uh, offer you a new idea about what can be done with open data and what actually is being doing somewhere else in the world. Starting from these smart city solutions, uh, what we are doing exactly here in Europe and in Singapore. Basically, our installations are covering many places in Europe, starting from Barcelona, here, uh, and before that, our development center, which is located in Bern. Then we are covering Prague, the capital city in the Czech Republic, and we are also present somewhere in the north of uh, Sweden, in Schleft, they are very close to the Arctic Circle, a very cold place. And uh, then in Singapore, of course, where we are covering the, almost the whole, uh, the whole island. But what exactly uh, are we doing there? Starting from what we are doing in Singapore, where we are mainly addressing commercial entities, so shopping malls, shopping centers, commercial districts, uh, we are covering the whole area in order to provide information about how many people are visiting a shopping center where they are from and where they are going, how they move all over the island. We are collecting information about uh, uh, how many unique visitors per day are registered in a specific shopping mall. Uh, and we can offer this kind of data for, to whoever is interested in them. We are also offering competitive analysis. In fact, uh, we can provide uh, uh, events uh, to event managers uh, or exhibition organizers or uh, the mall owners themselves information regarding how their competitor behave, how they perform, in order to give them visibility about what's going on elsewhere outside their business. Back in Europe, in Prague, for example, we are collecting information about people, how people flow uh, among several areas of interest in the city tourist attractions or uh, commuters hubs in order to have an idea about how many people are moving exactly where and at what time during weekend or weekdays. Back in Bern, we are monitoring uh, the train station, so we are uh, closely uh, looking at the public transportation. And our system is capable to create alert according to whatever extraordinary is happening there. For example, last November, a very rare occasion for the Swiss transportation was a train accident. A train accident that actually happened on the very same day uh, when a traditional market was taking place in the capital city. So a lot of people, as you can see uh, in the blue 
data series were stuck in the train station because they were heading home after work and uh, the train accident occurred at a very bad time. So this kind of monitoring is what we are using uh, in Bern, for example, but to be closer to you, for example, in, in Barcelona, we are analyzing the tourist population and their behavior here. So we are looking at tourists, we are looking at them, uh, understanding where they are going, and before that, where they are from. So which are the most popular countries of origins, and not surprising, Italy is the first. So what, what's the technology behind all these installations, and how this technology works is what I'm going to explain you how. LBA Sense is a location-based technology that consists of a network of sensors, short-range and long-range mobile phone detectors. So at this point, usually people get scared because, yes, we are listening to your mobile device's signals, but not now. So if you can feel relief, this is the moment. We are uh, listening passively to the signals transmitted by uh, mobile devices in order to understand uh, as a combination from, uh, of data provided by the both uh, types of sensors, um, we are getting information about the movement, about uh, uh, the location with a very high accuracy. And this system can ap be applied on a city-wide scale. So how then this data can be used? First of all, if you're customers, our customers, you can have access in, in, to an online dashboard where you can register, you can log in with your own credentials, and you can access the data. But who else can access this data are, for example, the uh, mobile application developers. People that can get in our information or the information that we are collecting through APIs, through the application programming interfaces, and in this way, what they can do is to enrich their analytics with the, with the data that we are providing. This is something that will be very, very clear when we will uh, be talking about uh, the open data. What happened with this data? Usually, uh, it, um, on one side, there is our analytical platform that is collecting this kind of information. On the other hand, there is an external system, a third-party system like the mobile application that is your, on uh, your cell phone. This is how it works so far. So if there are our sensors deployed where the, the mobile application is meant to be used, let's uh, think about, for example, a shopping mall application or uh, the public transportation application. When you are nearby uh, a bus terminal or a station or inside the mall, you want to uh, use your application to get whatever information you want. At this point, since our system register uh, your mobile as, as a, again as an anonymous information about uh, the, the mobile itself, not the person that is behind, we are able to say that you were here. At least your device was here, and how many times uh, how many times it has been detected here. But what's for? If you think about this integration, any time that we are detecting you nearby, we can notify the other system, the external system, saying, look, this device has been here already three times, the very same day in the past three weeks. The application can decide then to push notifications to you, messages to you with, for example, tailored deals, if we are talking about mo uh, shopping malls, tailored deals that are uh, really customize upon your habits because we know that you have been into this bar for three times per, per, per week and we know that maybe you like this bar so the application developer decides to push uh, this promotion to, he, to you. As I said, there is a problem between the identification of the person that is carrying the device in the sense that we are not collecting any personal data so when I talking about you are going to the bar, actually I'm talking about your mobile device because we have no interest in collecting personal data. But of course, if you are downloading the application and uh, conditions and terms apply as usual, you might be requested to leave your email address or mobile number. And at this point, your data, the, what is called personal data, will be stored in the third-party application. 
So it's something like an agreement between you and the application developer. But this is something that you control and that you agree upon. In all the other situations, these information are completely anonymous. And under this point of view, what they can be used for is the example that I just gave you. If the application is not for the shopping mall, but for the public transportation, and the application knows because we are behind and we detected you before, your mobile devices before, and we know that you are doing a, the very same uh, path from work to home with this underground line, and there is a disruption on the line, the application can tell you as soon as you are nearby that there is this disruption on the line that you are taking. So you can change your way, or you can wait, or you can uh, do whatever you want. So this kind of integration is what uh, these data are, are meant for. But so far, this is the scenario that applied. With the data as a service, we are moving forward. We are going where data can be used again in an anonymous way, but to enrich any kind of uh, information that you want to, to get. Because you can combine this data for, with other information that you think are useful in a very creative way. So when we talk about the data as a service, and uh, we are, I will uh, introduce you the case for Singapore, we are talking about something a little bit new, but not far away from what we are seeing now. The, open, the data as a service in Singapore is an initiative strictly related with open data for government, and not only for government, but also for private sector. The aim that is uh, behind uh, this initiative that is part of the Smart City program, the Smart Nation, sorry, uh, program for Singapore. In Singapore, the city, the island is the city and the city is the, uh, is the nation itself. This, therefore, they call it Smart Nation. These initiatives are uh, designed or thought uh, in order to make Singapore the biggest and the most strategic data hub in Asia not only in Southeast Asia, but in the whole Asia. And the government itself is the one and first promoter of the initiative. The government itself uh, want to be, wants to be the creator of a standard. It wants to promote uh, use cases. It wants this technology and this idea of data as a service to be for any use, for any public and private use. So. When we are talking about this, someone can think that since the government is involved, it necessarily has to be for free. This is not true. The open data doesn't mean that are free data. In fact, as you can might, uh, easily guess, there are a lot of reasons why companies can apply but to whatever initiative, but the main one is the revenues. So there is a way to get people involved in this kind of initiative and there is a way to get revenues out of it. In fact, in the statement of uh, uh, the tender, there is written exactly what is reported there. That data as a service is meant to allow organization to share, commoditize, and monetize data as an on-demand service. It means that you don't, maybe the company owns the data, but for sure are the end users, the ones that are going to use it and uh, for whom the data are fruitful. Under this point of view, there is the necessity to implement uh, something like a standard. In this case, we are referring to the technical reference 33, 2013, uh, that basically define some guidelines for the design and the implementation of the data as a service APIs. So, the users can directly or uh, through APIs access these data, uh, process them, combine them, and basically do whatever they want with these data, presenting them as a standing alone uh, information or integrated in other uh, data sets. The point is, even if we are talking about open data, the very focus is not on the data set itself, is not on the file, but is more on, let's say, the generic view, that is the approach, how people can get this data. So the focus is on the API. In fact, if we think about that, this is the infrastructure. 
DFRC, my company, as I, and others are data providers. It means that they have data, they have several different kind of data that they can uh, disclose to whoever is interested. But then this can be different because every single data provider uh, has different data sets. So there is the need of a common interface which is not focused on the data set itself, but how this data can be used. And this is the API layer. In the data access API, everyone on the other side, so end users that are private citizens or co other companies or application developers, can access the data in a very unique and common way. So there is a common interface that is equal for anybody. And through this API, they can get this data set, they can combine it to another one, and they can do, again, uh, what they want to do with them. So the secret and the focus here is on the APIs, on the, the common interface that has to be built before uh, of the data set. In fact, when we are talking about this initiative, we are talking about a simple way to get this data and comes from uh, a search engine, a normal one that is simply uh, discoverable, not at the usual URLs that you're used to, like Google or uh, Yahoo, but is data as a service, daas.bmar.com.sg. In this case, it doesn't seem, seem as simple as I said before, but because Beamer is the name of our uh, exclusive distributor in Asia, actually where uh, I usually work. So if you, since Beamer in this case is the data provider, you have to think that you just have to replace the data provider with the name of another one, and you can get this page, this your uh, web page, in which I log in as Beamer, but you can access as an external. And you simply type in, in this, the search field, whatever you are looking for, any kind of keywords that you usually look for. In this way, of course, with a very fancy name, I use Singapore, and these are the results. And already you can see that many are the data sets that are uh, responding to this search, and they are not only for, from us. There is at least another one that ranks better than us, and it is uh, the Singapore hydrodynamic whatever. So that can be a simple query, a simple way to access the data that is very simple, very intelligible for anyone. In this way, you can then uh, make advanced search, you can filter the results uh, with common and standard keywords, so you can use the usual tag that we uh, are commonly using, using, but there are also some specific uh, and customized uh, tags that, in this case, the government of Singapore and its agency that is behind this initiative decided to, uh, to create. First of all, and it's not the least, the least important, is the differentiation of the data set in terms of free or paid. It's what I was saying before. We are talking about open data. We are not talking about free data. And all the ones that you will see here are paid because are, there are companies behind that collected this information and they are willing to disclose them behind the, and upon payment. The other kind of parameters, uh, SSIC level one, SSIC level two, are, are simply other um, customized fields that IDA, the Infocom Development Authority that we are working for in Singapore, asked to, to fill in in order to make the result clearer. Because as you can uh, think, you can have a several uh, infinite type of data. And you want to, as we said before, you want to provide a unique access to any of us. And in order to provide them, you have to categorize your data set. To, at least uh, you have to, um, for example, differentiate among industries. So you can go for a search in the, I don't know, public transportation field or for the health and uh, safety sector or market or whatever you want. And in this case, you can have a subset of activities that you are interested in and you want to search for. So market uh, research or finance um, results or in this way, you can search for whatever, really whatever you want, and you will get a data set that have been tagged with this name. So you have the usual concept of tags applied to file 
in this case. These are examples of what we are doing in Singapore. So what we are providing as data sets, what we are uh, disclosing to people that can access them upon payment, as I said before, uh, in this initiative. We are providing information about Orchard Road. Orchard Road, for whoever of you has been in Singapore, is a two kilometers long uh, road of shops, literally full of shops. And not only single shops, but real shopping malls with uh, the world f most famous brand, uh, from the most luxurious to the cheapest one. The point here is that there are several thousands of people visiting these malls every hour. And I'm not joking, any of this shopping mall is bigger than my hometown. So these numbers are really crazy, but they are true. And if you want to know if your shopping mall is better than another one, you need to know how many people are coming to it. Because maybe they are not all, all customers, but they can be potential customers that you want to address. So these are the information that we are collecting. Number of unique people visiting per hour these shopping malls on weekly basis or daily basis or uh, whatever is the requirement and the data set that we are uploading. In the result, you can see specification in um, not only of the description of the data set, the name of the data set, but also the additional information that we were talking about before. So you can have a, a reference to the fact that this is a data set related to uh, activity and market research in, let's say, the, um, in the commercial area or commercial industry in Singapore. And these are keys that can be used to tag this data set in order to make your research simpler. And then uh, there are information regarding the quality of these data that are other mandatory fields that IDA uh, decided to put here, which are related to number of records, uh, rate of uh, field records, rate of empty records, which are not only for technicians, but they're willing to give you an idea about how big or how many information are behind these data sets. Another one is related to the mobility pattern, something similar that, well, to what we are doing in Prague, but you here we are doing it in, uh, among the areas in which uh, Singapore is typically divided with a very regional way. There is north, south, east, west, and center. And we are providing information about how many people, in terms of percentages, move from one area to the another one during several time, in uh, several time uh, per day or uh, during weekdays or weekends. And again, this kind of information is categorized in terms of descriptions, name of the file, source of the file, and information regarding the fact that it's free or paid, and uh, the categoriz uh, categorization pardon, uh, regarding the industry, and regarding the kind of application that you can address with this information. Another one is related to the Singapore mall census that I was talking before in the previous slides. So we are looking at the shopping malls. We are dividing them by uh, property because there are several companies that actually own several malls. And we can provide uh, performance indicators like the number of people visiting the mall and the number of tourists among them, for example. And these are other information that can be used to create mashups, to create to combine uh, uh, other information that you already own to give a new and original, uh, for example, point of view about the commercial activities in Singapore. Uh, we are not the only contributor, of course. There are several other uh, partners here, and these are their data sets. So you can see how they are different in nature. There are uh, real estate data, there are financial reports, and everything is accessible uh, and to, um, can be visualized in some, let's say, homemade tools that are already provided by this service. So maps or graphs that can be built on your data set just pressing a button. Or you can extract and download this data set. These are the references. This is the, uh, the first one is the, the website where we, we were before. The second one is IDA, the Infocon Development Authority official website. That is the authority, the government agency that is behind this initiative. So basically, what's the point in all this talk? 
it's not a technical talk. It's something that would like to give you, um, it, it, um, that wants to depict you the role of the government in creating open data and providing them to population, companies, and this industry. The government has to be an active promoter. They have to be standards creator if there is no standard to, to use. And they should promote the adaptation of data as a service to the industry because this data has to be used by somebody that are not only private citizens but also other companies. And this promotion can be done in several ways. But of course, there has to be standardization, as I said. In this case, it has to be the final aim is to create a unique catalog because they want to have a unique way to access this data that is uh, good for anybody without any difference. And of course, last but not least, there is the finan financial support because otherwise none of this company would have applied. So this is all for today. And this was the case of Singapore for the open data. And for any other questions or whatever you want to ask me, except the weather in Singapore, I will stick around for some minutes again. More. Thank you. Yes, hello. 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 Hello? Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation for the presentation. Thank I'm you afraid for your I'm attention. going to, I'm gonna be a bit uh, narrow minded on I'll, I'll be looking at my own case. Only. Yeah, sure. But I was wondering, you were, you have mentioned um, mobility, location, yes. and I was into. I was. I'm really interested in uh, commuting. Yeah. I was wondering, do you have implemented or do you have in mind implementing a solution to track down uh, the uh, commuting or the uh, mobility mode in which people is moving apart from tracking? Mm -hmm. their, their movements uh, using okay. the telephone as a homing beacon. Do you have in mind setting up an application showing whether they are walking, going in bicycle, bus, um, etc.? That's the point. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the, the, yeah, the, sure. the question in Catalan so that they sure. understand. I feel the pregunta de si han uh, tenen a ment uh, incloure de una manera voluntària alguna mena de, de sistema de, de, de tracking per saber si la gent s'està movent en bicicleta, caminant, en, en sistema públic de transport, en sistema privat, en vehicle, perquè crec que en el, en el canvi, en l'interface, és on hi ha la generació de valor, no? saber on la gent està commutant realment. So, that, that was my point. I, I, I believe, looking in a very narrow-minded way at my, at my case, which is a city next, next to Barcelona, yeah. really glued, we are shackled there, really uh, in the commutation system, but I'm interested in that point. I was wondering if you share this point that maybe the, the commuting point would it's provide also good information to the, to the town halls, for instance. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, uh, what we are doing, for example, in, uh, in Sweden is to serve the municipality to understand that how people move because they want to, let's say, prevent uh, from during snowfall period or winter period uh, the circulation. So they want to know which is the favorite uh, path for people to go from work to, sorry, vice, vice versa, from home to work uh, in the morning or vice versa in the evening. And this is the kind of information that we can get, which the travel path is. The point that you are asking is by which mean, uh, public transportation or bicycle. In this case, for example, or both, yeah. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, what we can do is to deploy our sensors where the uh, underground stations are, for example. In this case, you are sure, since our system detects the same device moving from one place to the other one, we can be sure that this person took the, the, the underground, the MRT, the mass rapid transport, uh, there or uh, went by bicycle because you know the difference in time between this person and the other one. 
We are not going so far, we haven't gone uh, in de into details uh, to give you this kind of information. But it can derive for, um, by our system because we have this information. We are tracking you and the information about time, the time traveled uh, from one place to another one can be answered to your question. So it's in two minutes, it can be only with the, t uh, the, the MRT or with the bus in five minutes or 10 minutes with the, with the bike. But there is no other way we can do it. Because, because we are, uh, we need to follow the the signal, but we and we can maybe follow it uh, on the road. But to be sure about its location, we have to go with the sensor in every single location because our high accuracy uh, is not enough for what you are asking. So. So ab what? apart from using the, the telephone as a homing beacon, uh -huh. uh, having an, uh, I was wondering mean, about the fact of having uh, an, uh, an application, a volunteer on which on a voluntary basis you would input uh -huh. which kind of transportation you are using. I mean, okay, I'm then walking now, then we I'm, can collect I'm bicycling now. I'm then we can collect information, of course. But then it's something that is, uh, doesn't come from our system. It's something that you are using, that the user can use. And of course, if we know this information, we can build uh, a report upon that. But let's say that this is the part of integration with other, other system. It's the part in which we are providing our uh, location information to a third party application that gets uh, the location or the medium by the, the user that is telling the application where, it, uh, where is it going and which uh, by mean. But in this case, what you get is a, a sort of uh, integration between uh, this data that is not directly coming from us. So back to the, your question, you said if, you have in, if we have in mind this project uh, uh, enables this kind of situation to put together information that are coming from different sources, not necessarily integrated. So far, we can do it if we have an integration with the application itself. So in this case, yes, we can give you the old figure, let's say. But if you think about the fact that we can collect this information as standing alone, so our location that are completely anonymous and the information of how many people are doing this check-in, let's say, on the application, uh, going by bike or by train, then you can put together the information and you can extract some statistical information. Instead, and this is, for example, the way in which the, these data sets can be combined. This is one of the applications of the open data. Instead, if you want a specific integration saying, okay, I'm now detected by my own sensor and I'm here by car, and I will do the checking on the application, then this only comes with the integration of our sensors and the mobile application. So we have to deploy the sensor all over the points of interest in the city, which is not that bad as you can think. It's not thousands or millions of sensors. Uh, there are many, of course there are many, but as I said before, we are providing also long range sensors and exactly the smart city solution uh, Used, uh, uses a, a mix of these kind of sensors. So the long range, of course, uh, provides a, a better and large and wider coverage. The other ones are used to locate you with a higher accuracy. But we are talking about something like that in this case. With an integration, is possible. Sicuramente sarebbe stato meglio in italiano per tutti, si capisce abbastanza meglio che l'inglese. Ma comunque, since Singapore government has invest, as I understand, quite a huge amount of money and has permitted to develop all these applications, which is the level of accountability that you must pay to go to Singapore government, which is the the range of uh, its uh, uh, capability to control the real anonymization of, of data, mm -hmm. uh, that no process of de-anonymization uh, de is, is, is being accomplished by your company or whatever other companies mm -hmm. are taking in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, huge okay. project of, of, of that as a service. And 
which is the level of uh, semantic uh, technologies you've developed, if there's a semantic layer in here? Okay. Um, okay. First of all, the anonymization of data is something that is true for us. This is how we work. This is how our system works. I cannot tell you the, the same for other uh, partners or their data sets because, for example, when we have talked about uh, financial reports uh, for more than 200,000 uh, uh, companies registered in Singapore, these data are non anonymous by definition. And our partner is collecting the, I, I cannot tell you why, uh, sorry, I cannot tell you how because I don't know. But for sure they are not anonymous. So this uh, fact that I wanted to highlight is because uh, we know that there is a specific sensitivity about the fact that these mobile devices are tracked. I'm the first that is concerned. So, uh, and this, this is why um, we are going into this direction because this is the solution to, let's say, not bother anyone and at the same time provide them with a useful service. But of course, these data sets are coming from different realities, from different companies, and there are some of them that are actually completely clear. Uh, there is names or name, company, addresses. I don't know how the government wants to control them. We also have to think about that the Singapore government is a democratic government, but they know a lot of things, really a lot. So actually, I don't know what they can control because they are the first ones that know things. So in any case, um, Let's say this is not the point, is the point of my presentation because uh, I, I want to uh, explain you how our system works. But uh, it's not the mm, mandatory point in all these, uh, this initiative. Uh, I am pretty sure that if some personal data will be disclosed in these initiatives and they are checking every single file that is uploaded to this portal that you have seen because they are doing it, if there is something like that, I think it would be a great problem for whoever will upload it. So let's say under this point of view, to me there is no concern. I can understand that someone else cannot feel safe, but this is what they can, uh, they can uh, assure you. Um, regarding, so in, in this point, there is a sort of uh, uh, sharing of responsibilities between the company and this IDA agency because they are monitoring and supervising the initiative but then again it's up to the company what they are uh, uploading and of course there will be some kind of uh, punishment for whoever uh, will break the rules and um, instead regarding the semantic engine uh, there are a lot of technical stuff that I can show you uh, but Let's say uh, we are dealing with Seeken to upload the files and stuff. Uh, the only uh, guidelines that we have so far to, um, to be compliant with are to fulfill of this uh, um, customized field for the research. Uh, but all the, let's say, the real process to implement the data cleaner, to implement the Seeken is something that if you want, we can discuss aside because I'm not, I'm not the right one. I'm not the right person because I'm not dealing, uh, lucky for me, with it because it has a lot of problem. But basically, it's just Seeken, so it's very common, very wide used, uh, and uh, um, nothing more than that. You're welcome. <laughs>